Hello, this is the 1st of May 2016. This is Nigel Gray. Uh, my face, my YouTube account is Imaginization. Uh, you can check it out. Obviously, this video is on it. Uh, please subscribe to it. I want to tell you a little story. I am going to try my best here. Uh, about six months ago, um, or less actually, it was during the summer here, we had a pamphlet in the mail from Safe Communities Foundation New Zealand and they were inviting us to a, um, to a barbecue or something like that at the local school which um, sounded kind of uh, all very nice and all very suspicious so the very first thing that I did was to try and find out what Safe Communities Foundation New Zealand was and I found this website and um, well have a look at this what is a safe community a safe community is a place that is attractive to live work and visit doesn't that sound wonderful a safe community is a livable community where people can go about their daily activities in an environment without fear risk of harm or injury it creates an infrastructure in local communities to increase action by building local partnerships and co collaborative relationships i can go on uh, community safety is not only about reducing and preventing injury and crime it is about building strong cohesive vibrant participatory communities homes the roads public spaces and the workplace are safe for everyone to enjoy this uh, sounds like something wonderful uh, it sounds like an ideal and nothing wrong with it except for one little thing and that is don't we have the ability to do that already uh, doesn't the community already work together to achieve this? And that is my thought on it. So I looked a little bit further and I found out that Safe Communities is a part of the Pan Pacific Safe Communities Network. And it also sounds very good. They have the same goals and Actually, I think it's down here. Let me just check here. Um, for over 10 years, Safe Communities Foundation New Zealand mission is to provide, to promote, support and inspire communities in New Zealand to create safe communities and increase the adoption of safer behaviours. Um, okay, common sense is usually what creates safer situations. <clears throat> I don't really know that any foundation or organization is going to increase common sense uh, not just by being a member of it or or by having it all the communities as a member of it um, okay safer uh, communities foundation New Zealand develops collaborative relationships with government agencies well that's very interesting because it's true but the public weren't invited to actually have any say in whether they did collaborate with the government and I'll tell you more about that shortly uh, uh, here we go Safe Communities Foundation New Zealand is also a member of Pan Pacific Safe Communities Network right okay uh, Pan Pacific uh, Safe Communities Network is in the process of developing official relations with the World Health Organization I don't think so uh, already developed it's just a matter of, uh, of a piece of paper and how they work it all out but uh, here we go here uh, Pan Pacific Community Network, an internationally safe community support centre and a World Health Organisation recommended approach is working closely with World Health Organisation pending its designation as a non-governmental organisation NGO 
in relationship with World Health Organization. Well, who's doing all this? That would just all happen by chance. No, it didn't. And I want to actually take you down the rabbit hole and show you what this all is. New Zealand currently has 24 safe communities covering 30 territorial authorities. Um, interestingly enough, when I first looked at this in the summertime, I think it was about December, and they invited us to this barbecue and I found this, there were only about six or seven, I think, uh, members, communities in New Zealand that were members of Safe, uh, safe Communities Network. Now have a look at how many there are here, and we find 24. Okay, they counted it out as 24, but, but look at that. It's quite a list, isn't it? Well, it was only half a dozen. Now, here's the interesting thing, is that if you care to scroll through all of this stuff, um, you will find that in order to become a Safe Community Network, Somebody has to pay $2,000 to the Safe, uh, Safe Communities Network Foundation. Now, where does that $2,000 come from? Well, it comes actually from ratepayers' money, um, and it's paid by your local council. However, you are not advised of this by the council. Uh, you are not invited or told about it. The council use your money to become a member of this Safer Community, Safe Communities Foundation without your knowledge, which is also a part of Pan Pacific Safe Communities Network. Let's see where that goes. Now, they are a member of the Pan Pacific Safe Community Network and World Health Organization. Pan Pacific Safe Communities Network is working closely with World Health Organization, pending its designation as an NGO, an official relationship with World Health Organization, which means basically that it is part of World Health Organization. Okay, World Health Organization um, is very much also a part of um, <clears throat> UN, UN collaboration, who we work with, UN collaboration, right? Um, who works with the world, with the United Nations? World Health Organization works closely with the United Nations system and supports its member states in achieving their national priorities. <clears throat> okay, and then we go to United Nations and you're all familiar with United Nations. Um, <clears throat> Intergovernmental organization to promote international cooperation. All right. So um, anyway, it's very interesting that this Safer Communities Network, when they um, invited for the barbecue, they invited people also to... Uh, make a list of what of your vision, public's vision of a safer community. And so I guess people wrote things down. I was outside protesting at the time, so I didn't get to, uh, to do any of that. Because I believe that at least we should be informed of who the safer community network are or foundation are connected to and what that, how that ties in to the United Nations. Um, <clears throat> so that is where it's going. Um, now, I could actually read out this. Uh, there's a book called The Sellout of New Zealand, Dennis McKenna. And uh, on page 52, we have the Electoral Act, 1956 for New Zealand. Th Section 32, how vacancies are created. Um, one, the seat of any member of parliament. A, if otherwise than being by virtue of, then by vir virtue of being a member of the overseas service, 
for one whole session of Parliament, he fails without permission of the House of Representatives to give his attendance in the House, so he could become he his seat could be vacated. He could be he could lose his job uh, if that happened if he failed to turn up to the Parliament meetings. B. If he takes any oath or makes any declaration or acknowledgement of allegiance to any foreign prince or power. Now, I don't know about you, I don't know how it's all uh, arranged on paper, but I would say that United Nations uh, would come under the category of foreign power. Uh, so, any if he takes any oath or makes any declaration or acknowledgement of allegiance, just acknowledgement of allegiance, well, isn't working with the United Nations, isn't the government, isn't the council paying uh, the United Nations $2,000 ratepayers money without telling uh, the local community that they're doing so, isn't that a uh, uh, a declaration or acknowledgement of allegiance to any foreign power okay and C if he does or concurs in or adopts any act where he may become a citizen a subject or citizen of any foreign state or power or entitled to the rights privileges or immunities of a subject or citizen of any foreign state or power well I don't know what they sign over and what permissions it gives them uh, but it, that is entirely possible also so what we have here is a very covert step-by-step -step infiltration of the United, United Nations into New Zealand and uh, I would guess that it's being done this way uh, probably all over the world and uh, there are now all of these um, these communities that are members from Auckland right down through to mostly in the North Island actually interesting um, <clears throat> there is Christchurch there Okay, so that is uh, something that is being done without your knowledge and um, as I say, this is incrementally uh, taking over New Zealand with United Nations, infiltrating local councils and uh, making your community safe. <laughs> what I, I don't know about you but I think that we're entirely capable New Zealanders are entirely capable of making a safe uh, injury free community without United Nations um, I don't know how you feel about that but I certainly feel that way really what is a United Nations going to do when um, somebody's out there on their motorbike um, having a good time and they fall off uh, are they going to pass a law that says you can't do that uh, I think injury is part of uh, part of life you know shit happens this kind of thing well that may or may not be true but you can work it out for yourself this however is true and it certainly fits in with Agenda 21 and the more recent Agenda 2030 which is the uh, United Nations agenda to uh, basically create a one world government, um, depopulate the earth to 500 million and I think there was something on this, um, oh yeah, World Health Organization, get vaccinated, go for the gold. Um, <clears throat> immunization stops two to three million deaths each year however an additional 1.5 million deaths could be avoided with better vaccination coverage well we all know the um, 
number of people who've had bad results with vaccines and we, we also know what is contained in the vaccines, uh, mercury and other chemicals. Uh, so this is the kind of, is this, is this an organisation you really want to have in your community? Um, then there was another point here, uh, something about injuries, two point, well, I think it's in the Pan Pacific one here, Pan Pacific, they talk about, oh here we go, injuries are, are a global public health problem, more than 5 million people die from each year from injuries. Right? Now, there are, what, something like 7 billion people on the planet now? 5 million people die from injuries? <laughs> I don't think that um, that's a large quantity uh, when, you, when you take 7 billion people. It's a very small percentage, actually. Um, it's just kind of odd. But if you want to keep them alive so that you can vaccinate them, um, really, what is the vaccination doing? Killing people? Okay, well, uh, there is something that you could ask your local council about and uh, find out where the money came from to pay for your membership in the Safe Communities Foundation Network um, and why weren't you advised of that, of that payment and why weren't you advised that your ratepayer money was being used to uh, fund a United Nations group and actually when we're talking about that I haven't even looked at this but it did have a uh, Oh, here we go, Board of Trustees, Director and Board of Trustees. Now, I haven't even looked at this one yet, uh, but it should be interesting. But how did these people come together? Where do they... Here we are, George Fairburn, Rory, Jeff Wilson, Site Safe New Zealand. I bet he's making good money now. Okay, so, and this lady who passed on, okay, so where did these people come from, uh, who, you know, obviously it's come down from United Nations and they have put together this NGO to uh, create this whole Safe Communities Foundation New Zealand. But, you know, they haven't been open in, in how they uh, have come in. They've been very hidden. They've gone through the councils, but not been, uh, with no due process of discussion with the local community. And that is very concerning. Okay, this is uh, Nigel. I'm going to wrap up now. Um, uh, if you, uh, as I say, please subscribe to my uh, my. Um, YouTube channel, Imaginization, and I have a lot of other videos here on weather modification in New Zealand. Have a Facebook page, Weather Modification Watch New Zealand. Uh, this is Nigel uh, checking out.